Hey everybody, it's the Moto Dutchman, and this is a detailed run-through of the Ducati 1299 Panigale's full TFT dashboard display. It took me a while to track down exactly what TFT meant because the acronym is never mentioned in the owner's or service manuals, but it does indeed stand for Thin Film Transistor. Now that I know what it stands for, I somehow feel cheated that it wasn't as good as the TFT definitions on Urban Dictionary. For example, TFT could stand for Time for Tea or The F***ing Truth, which is used to describe an extreme case of agreeing opinions. It's the more serious version of QFT, quite f***ing true. But I digress. A quick rundown of the controls will give us an idea of how we'll be navigating the menus. The right hand only contains the starter button and the kill switch that's operated by sliding down over the starter button to cut the power. The only benefit I can see from this is that it saves you the embarrassment of trying to start your bike while the kill switch has been flipped. Moving over to the left hand, we make use of the control switch up and control switch down buttons. The indicator cancel button doubles as the confirm button and will play a substantial role within the menus. The left and right indicator buttons don't have a use inside the menus, but we'll be putting the high beam trigger button to use. Along the way, I might pause this video to give me a little extra time to explain things. For instance, this oil service indicator tells me how many miles I have until the next oil service. As the mile approaches this service interval, it'll change to yellow. There's also a Desmo service indicator that looks like a little wrench and acts the same way. There are two display screens to choose from. This is the road display, and we'll see the track display later. For the purpose of this video, everything is set to defaults, but you can customize every portion of the riding mode. You've got a few standard things on this display, like your time, tack, and neutral indicator, not to be confused with the gear indicator. The gear indicator has nine possible values, one through six for each gear, N for neutral, and the character C for some reason when the system requires you to shift. If there's some sort of error, there's going to be a dash in that spot. There's a side stand indicator to save you the embarrassment of killing the bike when you put it into first, but I'm pretty sure I've still done that anyway. Below that, there's just enough room for an ice indicator that comes on at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. It's yellow and has a picture of a snowflake, and there's probably an easy yellow snow joke out there somewhere, but I'm not going to go for it. The up button will cycle through the total miles and two trip meters. If you hold up while you're on a trip meter, it'll reset. The down button will scroll through the engine temperature, current gas mileage, average gas mileage, average speed, trip time, and outside temperature. If you hold the down button, it'll bring up the menu. We'll get to that in a second. If you click the indicator cancel button, also known as the confirm button, you can select one of three riding modes, race, sport, or wet. You learn pretty quickly not to spam this button when you're canceling your indicators, but it's not gonna happen by the end of your test ride. While the riding modes are up, hold that button to select a mode. If you're stationary, it'll change right away, but if you're moving, it'll demand you close the throttle and release the brakes. If I scroll through the riding modes again, you can see that there are a specific set of values associated with each mode. These are the default settings for each mode, and they can be customized or just plain turned off. DTC stands for Ducati Traction Control. This system monitors the rear wheel and can be set to intervene when slippage occurs. The values for this are 1 through 8 and off. 8 being the most sensitive, 1 being the most relaxed, and off being, well, off. EBC Engine Braking Control. Choose off, one, two, or three. Off and one will give you a large amount of engine brake, while three will give you the least. ENG is the engine power mode. I guess they didn't want to put power on the screen. That would have made more sense. There are three values, low, medium, and high. Low will deliver 120 horsepower smoothly. Medium will deliver maximum horsepower smoothly. And high will deliver maximum horsepower instantly. DQS is the Ducati Quick Shifter. This might be the best thing on the bike because it's amazing. You can set it to up and down, up only, and off. I always keep the up and down option on because I think it's fantastic. To use the up, just give it throttle and shift up without the clutch. To use the down, close the throttle and shift down without the clutch. It'll blip to match the lower gear's RPM and you're good to go. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. More experienced riders may not need the assistance of ABS, but I actually keep mine on just in case. If you're not familiar with ABS, it prevents your wheels from skidding during hard braking. In a skid, you lose friction between the road and your tires. This is bad because friction is what's stopping you. The result of ABS keeping friction stops you faster than skidding and allows you to have better control than if you were skidding. ABS is relatively new on bikes, but it's starting to show up all over the place. 
The 1299 actually has cornering ABS where the bike knows if you're going in a straight line or around a corner when you grab a handful of brakes. Finally, DWC is Ducati wheelie control. This is another one that experienced riders don't care for. Values of 1 through 8 and off, 8 not allowing the front wheel to leave the ground at all, 1 being the most relaxed form of interference next to off. From the main screen, by holding the control switch down button for a few seconds, the menu will open. The first option to select is the riding modes, which allows you to customize each parameter within the mode. Traditionally, wet mode contains the most electronic aids and race mode is the least forgiving, but this doesn't stop you from customizing wet mode to have zero electronics. Let's bump down to sport mode and select. You can see the ABS can be set. Three is the least intrusive. DES is Ducati electronic suspension that's available for both the S and R models. Mine is the base model, so I don't have it. The display gives you a choice of road and track, and you'll see the difference later. Quick shifter, yes please. Wheelie control, eight being most intrusive. Traction control, eight's the most intrusive. Engine braking, Three is the most intrusive, but this happens in the form of fuel sprayed into the cylinders to reduce the amount of engine brake. Engine power and delivery. And finally, resetting everything to defaults. Alright, we'll jump back to the main menu, and we can notice the plus minus setting is grayed out. This is used in the S and R versions of the bike for suspension settings. Again, this is the base model and I don't have that. RPM gives a more granular readout of the RPMs. Its primary purpose is to aid in the setting of the idle. Battery will display the volts or read low or high depending if it's outside of 11 or 15 volts. DDA is also grayed out because I don't have the Ducati data analyzer. One of the added benefits of all these electronics is that the bike has an immobilizer. If someone attempts to start the bike but the correct chip is not recognized, the bike will not start. The pin code can be used to start the bike or access the menus if the key is not acknowledged following the startup check routine. Clock, standard. Date, standard. Backlight. Day forces a white screen with black letters, night forces a black screen with white letters, and auto switches the colors automatically depending on external lighting. The screen's black in this video because I have it set to auto and this was taken in my garage with the lights out so that I wouldn't get any reflection in the display. Inside of units, we have a few things here. Speed, standard. Temperature, standard. Consumption allows you to choose liters per 100 kilometers, kilometers per liter, and then comes the confusion. My first reaction was to make fun of the fact that the amount of miles you travel on a gallon of gas should be the same in the UK as they are in the US. I guess this has something to do with the different emissions rules between the countries? Tire setup. If you install tires other than OEM, this process allows you to recalibrate the traction control, wheelie control, and engine braking. You can also use this recalibration if you change your sprockets. If you use the lap timer, this lap selection will allow you to scroll through the lap data which shows each lap time, max speed, max RPM, and max lean angles for both left and right for each lap. Now we're going to select the race mode because it's track display. Remember that high beam flash trigger from the beginning of the video? Well here it is in all its glory. If I flick this thing, it'll start the lap timer. You'll notice that it resets after 5 seconds because the bike's not moving. If the bike were moving, the lap timer would keep counting and flicking that trigger would start a new lap time. You can record up to 30 laps and access them by getting into the lap selection in the previous menu. Using the up button from here will cycle through the lean indicator, total miles, both trips, and now that the bike has had time to determine that the gas light is on, there's a trip fuel mileage counter. This is actually a pretty handy feature because on previous bikes I've looked down at a gas light and wondered how long it had been on. This will actually tell you how many miles you've gone since the light has come on. The down button will cycle through engine temperature, current fuel mileage, average fuel mileage, average speed, trip time, and outside temperature. The last thing I'll show is how to turn on the hazard lights. If you hold the left indicator for three seconds, they'll start flashing, and they're canceled the same as canceling a turn signal. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this was beneficial to someone. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them. If this happens to be your first time watching one of my videos, please consider subscribing to the channel where I'll try and release a video every week. Most of them have to do with the 1299. Thanks for watching. Until next time.